I want to help you understand homework eight by means of a proxy example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prove example 524 in the book. This appears in page 200 and something. Um, and this is a, a theorem that we already proved that shows that Hall TM is undecidable. But the way we prove this now is with map reducibility. And the objective of this proof is really to show you that map reducibility generalizes or refactors a common proof pattern as a theorem, which makes our proofs way smaller, as you will see. So the difficulty is really getting the mapping function. Right, that's actually the, the the creative part of the proof process. Once you get the mapping function, the rest will follow from the theorem, theorem the corollary uh, five twenty three. So let's see what how that works. So we proved in corollary five twenty three that if a language A is a undecidable and A maps to B, then B is undecidable, and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to try to prove that Hall TM is undecidable because we know that ATM is undecidable. So what we need to do is show how to map from ATM, how to convert from ATM to Hall TM. So how do we do that? We need a function f, which is given, given in the book. What is not given in the book is the actual details of the proof, and that's what I'm going to show in the next few slides. And that's actually how what you have to prove. You will have to prove that um, EQTM is undecidable, right? EQTM is undecidable. That's what you have to prove. So how do we prove this? Proof is very simple, as it is explained here in the first uh, first sentence. So how do we prove it? We use corollary 523. We we will show that ATM is map reducible to HALT TM. And we already know that ATM is undecidable. So therefore, HALT TM is undecidable. ATM is undecidable theorem 411, which is a very important theorem we proved in lesson 21. So are we? what are we left with? We, we are left with showing that ATM is map reducible to HALT TM. And this is the, basically this, part of the theorem is then broken down into two. So this proving that something is undecidable by using map reducibility becomes trivial. It's just the application of a single corollary. So next, let's look at how in the example that I give you uh, of lecture 24, right, you will see that there is a definition of F. So how do we write this piece of code that it is written in the book. How do we write that in our Turing language? It's very easy. We have to do an, a function f that takes an input, but as we know, the input has to be converted to a pair, because here we see on input, and then it's implicitly decoding the input, saying that the input has to be m comma w. And then it's going to be doing two things, so that's going to be this function. So f that you see here maps to atm to halt tm, right? It's just showing how to convert a pair, an input from atm to an input to halt tm. So what is p? And then here is the two high level points. So this point and this point, one and two. So the code maps exactly to what is in the book. So on input m comma w, m comma w, what do we do? How do we write that in, in Coq? We actually have to call function decode machine input. So that takes a single string, right? Just an array, imagine an array of bytes into two things. It parses that input, converts it in, into the, the source code of a Turing machine M and some input that is also encoded there, right? So that is what this line is saying and that's how we write it in Coq. You won't be asked to write a mapping function. You will just be asked to prove things given an existing mapping function. Okay, so then second point is build the following uh, machine M prime, which we postpone the discussion. And then what we do, output M comma M prime comma W. So we use that notation uh, with the 
less than, and then brackets. So that corresponds to the notation of these brackets. And that's, you just return it, right? Because it's just a function, you just return the pair that you just constructed. So the difficulty is, how do I build M prime? Well, the way you build M prime, it says construct the following machine. So we use this special thing build that takes a program and returns a Turing machine, right? So what is M prime? On input X, that just means that that's the parameter X that is taken as a function, right? So we have on input X. Then what we do, run M on X. So as you know, that's written in, in our Turing DSL as call machine M with input X. And then we get a return R and we have to do an assignment to Mlet, right? So we're creating this R, which is the a Boolean that says whether or not this machine has terminated. So once it if the machine terminates, then you get a value here and you can run something. You either run this, you run this if, otherwise you just loop, everything loops, right? So assuming, so that's what implicitly this is saying. So next what we do, if M accepts, accept. So that means if R is true, then accept, which is to say return accept. Otherwise, if M rejects, right, which is else, loop which is what we do. So these are the three lines of code and how they, or the three lines of specification, algorithm specification that is written in the book and how you write it in Cock. So hopefully this is clear. The next thing we do is we are now ready to prove that ATM map reduces to halt TM. So we use the reduc reducible uh, if underscore if, to, to construct a map reducible thing. There are multiple ways of doing, you can just open the definition, but the easiest way is to use this theorem. And then you're left with an equi equivalency. And each of the cases is to show the two sides of the equality. First, you have to show that F of W belongs to halt TM. If that um, holds, then you have to show that W belongs to ATM. And then the reverse, if W belongs to ATM, then show how to construct f of w belongs to a whole tm. So then in your homework, you will also have these two parts of the equivalency. So now let's show how do we prove that for this specific exercise. So the structure of the proof of each of these branches is always the same, is you're given something, that is to say, w belongs to a language, and then the reverse. And the structure of the proof for each of these two branches this branch and this branch is always the same is you simplify the assumption and you construct a goal so by simplifying the assumption you get everything that you need to be able to conclude the goal to construct the goal how do we simplify the assumption we use the inversion theorem so in this case if we have atm it's going to be atm underscore inf and if we want to prove halt tm we need to call the constructor halt tm underscore def so you will see in the proof, in the proof that I'll show in the next video, um, that we, from ATMW, we can derive that W, you know, if W belongs to ATM, then W has to be a pair with a machine and an input, right? And if it, W belongs to ATM, then we know that that machine accepted that input, right? That we can just know by inspecting the, by doing an, that's what the inversion theorem tells you. Right, so we get these two things. And then what we do, we need to show that f of m comma i right, belongs to halt tm. So what we need to show is that if I call f m comma i, that's the same as returning looper of m comma i, right? Because what is looper? Looper is just this m prime, right? But here I just call it the function that takes as a parameter the machine m. So that's what builds M prime. So if I call F, it should be the case that the return is looper of M, which is M prime, and I, right? So from that, the last thing we need to show is that looper of M does not loop when M accepts, right? Because it has to be halted. So if it is halted, we know that the machine accepted and we know that when the machine accepts, then looper also accepts. And that is what the proof is trying to do.
okay? But as you can see, the pattern is always the same, is you need to get something about the this input. When, once you do inversion, you will get something about the W and something about the machine that is inside of W. And then what you need to prove is using these two results, you will be able to prove the result. So then on the other side, you have to show if f of w belongs to halt tm. So we, we know we applied the conversion from atm to halt tm. So if we, what we have to do, again, the two things, use the inversion theorem, in this case, halt tm inv, and then use the constructor theorem, in this case, atm def. And then, by using inversion, we will obtain two things. We know that fw, which is the input, equals some m prime and i, right? Because that's always the input that HALT-TM receives. It's always a pair of a machine and an input. And we don't, we will know that for that input, m prime, um, the machine did not, did not terminate. That's what you learned from HALT. You know that it, sorry, it did terminate. <laughs> um, so those are the two things you learn. You learn, you learn something about what is W. And the other thing you know is that M prime does not loop, right? It has to have halted. So if it does not loop, then because we know how looper works, either looper accepts or it loops, right? So if we know that M prime does not loop, then it must be the case that M has accepted I. And that is actually the difficult, the only difficult part of this proof is figuring out. Because now what you need to understand when you're doing this kind of proof is you have F of W and you have to reverse engineer what could the input be. You know, in the end, that's what you're trying to figure out. What is W? And then eventually you'll figure out that M, the input has to be an M and an I such that M accepts I. That's the only way for the looper to terminate. And once you know that M accepts I, then you are able to prove that because W is M comma I, then W belongs to a TM, right? Because W, the machine accepts I. And that's what you need to prove by definition.